Today we're going to learn about how to control the motors. Uh, so here we have the motor test file. Uh, notice up top we got all these defined things. We could also do uh, constant int e right equals 9. And these are just um, giving different names for the pins connected to the different pins on our H bridge. So we don't have to remember them all. Uh, so the thing that's connected to the left enable, whatever pins connected to the left enable, uh, I, I just made it equal to E right. So in this case, I believe, or left enable is 10. So in that case, I'd have pin 10 connected to, say, enable 1, 2. And then I'd have enable right, uh, pin 9, uh, connected to uh, the right motors enable. So, and we got kind of similar things going on here. Uh, this one is, I did LB for left bottom uh, and left top. So this is the pin of the Arduino uh, connected to the A that controls the left motor. So if we look at it, uh, let's say this one is connected to the bottom pin of the motor. If, the, if you look at the motors, uh, it'll have one pin up top and one pin on the bottom. And so I just said that, uh, say it's connected to this guy right here. Um, and then this Y is connected to the bottom pin of the left motor. That's how I came up with my naming scheme. Uh, anyway, so left top eight, the pin is connected to the uh, other A on that side, uh, right bottom 11, that's the pin on the Arduino connected to, uh, say, this one, this A right here, and then um, right top would be this guy right here, because this Y would be connected to the top of the right motor. I may have the left and rights backwards, so, but hopefully you got the gist. So just by defining these, it means that I don't have to remember which pins connected to what. It makes it a lot simpler. Anyway, uh, so in your setup, there's not a lot to it. All these things are outputs. So a whole bunch of pin modes. We want to set the uh, whatever pins connected to the enable right to an output, the enable left to be an output, and all our four A pins, um, all the pins of the Arduino connected to the A pins on the H bridge. They all need to be outputs. And then I made a bunch of methods. I got a set power. And the way we're controlling the speed of the motors is we are analog writing to our enables. So in this case, we got the same power levels. The int should be a number between 0 and 255, because remember, analog write uh, takes a number between 0 and 255. 0 for 0 volts uh, or all the time and uh, 255 for 5 volts all the time and uh, let's say if you got 128 it's on for half the time with 5 volts. So really we're not setting a real voltage to it, we're turning it on and off a whole bunch of times a second and we're leaving it on for longer if we've got a bigger number. And then so if we got a method like back or forward, let's do forward because that's the typical one. I've got set power to 160 that just analog writes 160 to both the enables. Um, that might not be enough power for you. If you're having trouble, just up that. Uh, really, I should have made it a constant variable that I can mess with up top or a define uh, standard power or something like that. Uh, anyway, and then we just do a bunch of digital writes to our A pins uh, for each uh, motor, like here's our left motor, one will have to be high and the other will have to be low because that'll make it uh, 5 volts on one side of the motor and 0 volts on the other and current will flow through one way. Um, if they're both low or both high, the motor won't turn because uh, there's no incentive for electrons to get from one side of the motor to the other. Uh, why did the electron cross the road? because there was a voltage difference. If there was no voltage difference, the electron would not cross the road. So in this case, we got a voltage difference, so the electron's crossing the road. Uh, the motor will turn. Uh, it's a little tricky to predict direction. Uh, if you get it backwards, 
just flip them, switch which one's high, which one's low. Uh, but remember, you're working with a single motor, uh, like both your lefts at the same time and both your rights at the same time, because one will have to be high, the other half be low. And if it's turning the wrong way, just flip them. Uh, so if we did this right, hopefully, uh, this could be entirely different for you, remember, because you might have put in your motors the other way than I did. Uh, so that would flip it the other way. Uh, it'll still work fine, but you just might have to switch uh, which one's high and which one's low. And so this forward method, it's actually maybe not the best for what we'll eventually do, uh, which is wall avoidance, because it happens for a certain period of time. It won't be checking the sensors while this delay is active. Um, but it's great if you want to do a predefined activity, say, make it draw a box or something. So we set the power to a certain level, increase it, decrease it as you feel like. We make sure our A pins of our H bridge are all at the right voltage levels uh, for each motor. Uh, one is high and one is low, and if you've did it right, it'll be turning the right way. And then uh, we wait a bit. Uh, and then we just turn them both off. So we're digital writing our enables to low, so that'll make them zero, and that'll deactivate that side of the H bridge, and then it won't, motors won't turn anymore. And then we wait like a little bit for it to stop. Uh, and that's basically how all the methods work. They're all identical, except uh, it's different on which one's high and which one's low. I will probably be messing with it later where we'll just do left and uh, instead of having the delay and then turning it off afterwards, it'll just have this part. Because uh, that's very handy if you're constantly pulling the sensors, you just constantly set uh, the values you want. And so it's changing hundreds or thousands of times a second. Uh, that'll give you a smoother moving. It won't be as jerky. And that's pretty much motor test right there. Um, in here, right now, I've got it set up for uh, um, sonar sensing, so wall avoidance. But for you guys, it would be more like uh, if you wanted to make it to do a box, you'll get it to go forward. Uh, for a bit, then left for a bit. Uh, so it'll go forward, do say left or whatever, turn 90 degrees, and then it hits the end of this, and then it'll go forward again, turn left, and so it'll just draw a box shape. Uh, you could do whatever you want in there. Uh, it'll just keep repeating it. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this. See you next time.